Viewer discretion is advised. There have been 27 attempts on SCP-096's life in the past six months, all directed by the man who set him free, Dr. Daniels. His termination has been delayed in order to allow him to oversee the destruction of SCP-096. But the O5s are losing their patience. Dr. Daniels is a condemned man. But if all he can do is fail, well, they have plenty of other people who can handle this project. He has a month left. Regardless of his results, at the end of that month he will be terminated. These are his last days and last attempts to take SCP-096 with him. Daniels, for his part, has spent the last six months in a cell. On a good day, he is escorted to the testing chambers to oversee an attempt, and then back to that cell. Today, however, is not one of those days. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a tale from the SCP Foundation. Daniel sat silently on his bed, his fingers interlocked with thumbs twirling around one another, thinking what step will he take next should the current plan fail. Occasionally, he gets up, pacing to and fro in the cell, and then sits back down. Unhurried footsteps coming from further down the hallway. Daniel stares eagerly at the door. The door opens when the footsteps stop. It's his colleague, Dr. Carver, one of the few who has the least disdain for Daniels. Two guards make their appearances from behind, with their weapons at the ready. You can put those guns away. What am I going to do, kill you? Ease up a little, all right? Good to see you too, Daniels. Did it work? Well, 682 skinned 096 alive and dissolved its flesh with acid. The bones were unaffected, though. Quite astounding, really. Daniels <laughs> chuckles, much to Carver's chagrin. Knew this would happen. It's like pitting an unstoppable force against an immovable object. Quite a miracle, that shy guy, isn't he? Can't you take this more seriously? You know they're gonna kill me once I get this done, yeah? I think a little sarcasm is a small price to pay for my sanity. You killed hundreds of people. These are simply consequences. I didn't kill anyone. That thing killed them. I just showed you what was possible. Carver is annoyed, but he doesn't show. He waves his guards away and leaves the door ajar. Daniels, I like you. You're a good worker, an earnest worker, maybe a little too earnest sometimes. But this time, you went too far. You were too idealistic for your own good. I mean, what were you thinking? Letting loose 096. You know, I tried to appeal your case to the O5s. Well, maybe if you people were a little more practical, maybe 096 wouldn't have gone on rampage like it did, now wouldn't it? Instead of talking so much. See, this is your problem. You wouldn't listen. You think you're above the rest of us. You're too egotistic for your own good. And see where we're at? In five seconds, I can walk through the door and live my life, while you will stay here and rot until the end of the month. Always talking about the preservation of specimens, instead of looking at the real threats around us. These are the things that should not exist alongside us. You guys needed a little wake-up call, and I've just done you lot a favor. I used to look up to you, Daniels. What happened to you? I've never changed. Perhaps you just think too much of me. By the end of this month, the Foundation will be rid of one of the stubborn pests for good. What will you guys achieve in the next few months, I wonder? You self-righteous bastard. He leaves the room and slams the door shut. Daniels only lies down on his bed, staring at the dull ceiling. Suddenly, he has an epiphany. He remembers something Carver said earlier. He quickly scrambles to the door and bangs at it. Knock it off in there, will ya? Carver, the lab coat. Call him back right now. I have something important to tell him. The guard hollers down the corridor to call Carver, who reluctantly paces back to Daniel's cell. What now? The statue. We can use the statue against 096. What the hell are you talking about? You said its bones were still intact, right? And breaking bones is what 173 does. You want to cross-test an object you can't look at with an object you have to look at? The logistics alone would be what? Do you think it's a bad idea? Carver becomes silent. He shudders at the thought of having to engage two of the most dangerous anomalies in the Foundation at once. Surely, <laughs> Daniels has lost his mind, and he feels like he has to. I think most of what you say is a bad idea, and I hate to say that this is one of the rare promising ones. Daniels grins. Carver gives a reluctant nod and leaves. A few weeks later, 
Daniel stands at the center of a large room, standing alongside him is Carver. The tension in the room is palpable. He can almost feel the hate of the scientists, agents, and command council members when they glance in his direction. He isn't phased by any of it. In fact, he enjoys it. It makes him feel superior to them, despite wearing the same coat as the rest of them. With that smug look that Carver hates so much, Daniels takes a step forward and motions to the screen behind him. SCP-096 has proven much more difficult to destroy than we previously had considered. You've been briefed on our past attempts. Fire, radiation, acid, kinetic force. Our most recent test involved SCP-682. Though it was exciting to behold, I'm sure, it was also unsuccessful. He turns around to play the recording. 682 is seen being shown an image of 096 using a projector on the cell wall. A shriek is then heard off screen. As 682 turns towards the sound, 096 rushes towards 682 in a frenzy. The monstrosities thrash against each other for a while until 682 clamps down on 096's body with its jaw and flings it towards the camera, at which point the recording stops abruptly. Gosh, wish I was there. Compared to seeing it live, it just doesn't have the same bite. Wouldn't you say, Carver? He ignores Daniels and continues the presentation. The screen behind Carver and Daniels flips through numerous images of SCP-096 as seen from behind. Each shows SCP-096 with various amounts and types of inflicted damage. Burns of various degrees, corroded flesh, bruised or even body parts that appear hollow. In every test, regardless of the damage dealt to the rest of it, SCP-096's bones survive unscathed. We have attempted to drill into the skull through the ocular sockets, but have been unsuccessful. An image of a broken drill bit appears on the screen behind Daniels. Every single test has shown that SCP-096's bones are completely indestructible. There is a pause, and then an image of a broken vertebrae appears on the screen. Until yesterday. A small murmur rises from the crowd, which fills Daniels with pride and satisfaction. He smiles. Yesterday, Daniels was allowed to be out of his cell to oversee his supposedly best plan to date to terminate SCP-096. Hold him! Daniels screamed at the agents from a nearby observation room as they connected a pipe to the now broken and open bones. SCP-096's marrow spilled slightly around the edges of the pipes as the hooked nozzle was latched into place. SCP-096 screamed and flailed as the pipe began to pump hydrofluoric acid directly into both the body and brain cavity of the monster. Acid bubbled out of the creature's mouth and the bag they'd placed on its head smoked before dissolving away completely. The thing's face, at once terrifying and pained, was melting away before their eyes. The agent's attempts to keep it pinned down now failed completely. It reached its hands up to cover its melting face, a face they had all just looked at. A single voice called out from the opposite side of the room from the agents surrounding SCP-173. Blinking! Then a low gurgling scream began in 096's throat. It rose in pitch and volume gradually until it was a deafening screech. The agents let the thing go and moved to the walls. Other agents moved slightly closer and leveled their guns. The monster's skin began to slough off into a puddle on the floor. Its gut burst and acid flew out in a small spray. The agents had facial protection from the acid, but nothing to protect them from its face. SCP-096 dropped its hands to its sides. It looked up at one of the agents, reached out, and began to run. Everyone opened fire. For the first time, and perhaps the last, bullets sank into the thing's body and bones. The first volley shattered the collarbone and threw the monster onto its back. It tried to get up, but the fire continued. They fired methodically up and down its body starting with its legs and ending with its shattered, dissolving head. When they were done, there was nothing left but a pool of acid, gore, and rage. Spreading slowly across the floor, a voice called out again, blinking. The agents at Dr. Daniel's sides each grabbed one of his shoulders. A third put him into handcuffs, and they led him out of the room. Hey, Carver. Carver turned towards him. Perhaps after this, you can start thinking about killing 682 next, huh? Fat chance if you think that'll pardon your sentencing. Oh, I'm not thinking of that. I'm way past that at this point. I'm thinking of you. It will be your project. When this is over, I'll be dead, and all you chumps will have to start thinking on your own two feet. Daniel <laughs> smiled and was let out of the room, leaving Carver pondering 
looking at what remains of 096. SCP-173 was exposed to SCP-096 and successfully broke its spine into two pieces between the fourth and fifth vertebrae. The image of a hole ripped into the side of a metal wall appears on the screen behind Dr. Daniels. Of course, after five hours of having its neck snapped, things went a little sideways, but recovery was accomplished fairly quickly. And you are now one step closer to being able to punish me. Congratulations. He bows. No one laughs. <laughs>